Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm hoping I'm going out live. My computer's having a little bit of issues. That so nothing new though. Um, yeah, so welcome to day number fourteen of my Monster a Day challenge. Um, if you tried to tune in yesterday for a recorded video, I apologize because. Um, unfortunately, I create was creating the monster and thought I was recording, and I was recording all right, but I'd forgotten to unmute my microphone. So I got about halfway through uh, through it and and realized like, oh yeah, the microphone's not on. So um, instead of trying to redo all that work, um, I just decided to go ahead and finish the monster and just post it and then there just won't be a video for tomorrow. But uh, I'm gonna go through a very similar. Um, process today so I'm going to be using collage again and remember you can do like whatever you want you can make any kind of monster you want I'm just doing doing my thing so you do your thing and you know as always think about posting so if you're creating monsters or you're working with kids or whatever I'd love to see what you're doing so you can always post it in the comments you can tag me in um, social media as well I'd love to see those things um, yeah, so if you are tuning in and you want to pop into the comments and say hi, it's always great to see who is out there. So, um, and uh, sorry, just kind of laughing at Bonnie's uh, response. So, um, <clears throat> her comment. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about what, what I'm going to be using and uh, we can go ahead and get started. So let me go ahead and switch it over. So I've got my same paper that I've been using, you know, that the Strathmore Mixed Media 400 series. It's a nice 140 pound paper, nice and thick and heavy. Uh, I've got my glue book. I've got my Uhu glue that I love and I've got um, a pencil, scissors, and then of course I've got my paper over here. Uh, and I think I mentioned the other day in, in a video that I'm using, not using regular construction paper, that I'm using um, Canford paper, uh, and it's a it's a high quality colored paper by Daler Rowney. So um, anyway, I'm going to do a, a monster where I'm going to have a background, so I'm going to use a nice big piece of black to do a background, and then I'll build the monster on top of that. So I'm going to do this just like I like I did the other day where I take this and put this on top just to kind of line it up and trace. Black's a little bit hard to see on that dark table. All right, and then I'm just gonna trace with the pencil. Oops. And yeah, I guess you can see that line that graphite is metallic, so it shows up pretty well on the black paper. And I'm gonna cut this just a little bit wider than the pencil mark because I know myself, I know that I don't always get the paper stuck to the mixed media paper perfectly. And so if I cut this out a little bit bigger, that gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Um, so that's always a good thing to have. So if we just cut it out a little bit bigger. So I just want to have a solid color in the background. I'm not going to worry about like trying to make some kind of scene or anything like that. Just trying to have a color that's going to contrast um, the monster. And I think I was kind of looking through my papers a little earlier just to kind of decide like, well, what color am I going to use? So I think I'm going to use a dark green and that should show up really nicely against this black background. But it's easy enough if you wanted to create some kind of scene. Yeah, using this black background, of course, I immediately immediately think of night so I can, you know, put a moon in the in it and something else, I don't know. But I just want to focus on the monster, especially since I'm only giving myself an hour or so. All right. And then, if 
find it sometimes easier just to kind of pick the whole thing up and then that way I can slide the paper around just making sure that it's covering up the white And so when I flip it over, I could see that, you know, I got a little bit hanging over. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to rub it, make sure that it is sticking down. So I'm going to have it nice and vertical. Um, if you looked at the image from yesterday, I had it horizontally and I, I kind of based it on a monster that I had made previously. But I think I'm going to use um, this nice dark green. It's going to show up really well. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to cut out the body shape and then use just double checking some things all right um yeah so i'm gonna cut out the the body shape i'm just trying to think if i want i think i might want the uh the monster to go off of the top edge so i'm sketching with pencil i didn't really do this the other day um but now that i'm i'm really thinking about the monster so when i did the monster face the big face you know i didn't really have much reason to, to sketch because the monster face kind of took up the entire the entire um, paper and so I was just kind of cutting stuff and, and trimming as needed and didn't really sketch it out but with this I do want it to be I do want to want to be a little bit more accurate so I can sketch things and I just I flipped it over so that way the pencil marks are on the back and this is a little bit bigger goes off the edge and that's fine I just realized like there's like little white spots not really sure what those are okay all right so you know, it's going to be something like that. Maybe put them off, off center a little bit, and then, you know, big mouth down here, horn sticking out, maybe some big eyes. So what I want to do is I want to. I'm not going to glue this down right now. If I glued it down, then I can't put anything underneath. And then what I want to do is make sure like the horns and such are kind of glued underneath. So um, those are the things I'm going to kind of focus on, like making the horns, making. Um, the arms come out so I'm thinking with arms you know just kind of using using this kind of uh, this paper here and what I want to do I'm gonna I'm gonna sketch it out oops And I really just want to make sure that it's bigger than what I what I'm going to need. I just realized something that I sketched it out the way I wanted it to be and not I wasn't thinking like, oh, yeah, I wanted to turn it over. I wanted to flip it over. <laughs> But I think that's, I think if I have his arm coming out, yeah, I think that'll be all right. So what I, w I wanted his arm to go down like this. And so I sketched it that way, not realizing like, oh, I want to flip it over. So, you know, you, you do those mistakes and then it's like, all right, I got to gotta deal with it, which it's not that big of a deal. So that's going to be his arm. It's going to go off the edge. So, 
you know, something like that, maybe. Okay, and then I, you know, I'm just kind of leaving it stick out there. So, anyway, we'll go ahead and put some glue on there. And then slide that back under. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this, but I think what I'll do is, I don't think I'm going to have to really sketch this or draw this because there's just going to be a little bit sticking out on that side. That's the thing, like with trying to do collage and then trying to break up the space like I, it's easy to do whenever you draw, but then with collage, you kind of have to think about like, okay, how's this gonna look? And then, you know, the, I'm not exactly 100% certain where I'm gonna glue him down. I'll probably glue him down over here, but you know, I, I've got a little bit of play there. And I have to kind of keep that in mind because I don't want things to come up short. Yeah, so again, it's sticking out. It's a lot bigger than I, I need, but I can just trim that off once I figure out where I'm going to glue him down. All right, so I've got the arms. Um, now I want to think about the, the horns. Um, I think I've got yellow. So I think I want to use a little bit of this. And I'll show up nicely against the... Uh, the green and the black. So this is going to go underneath like that. Come on. Makes it look like bug eyes kind of sticking out the side there, but that's where the the horn is going to horns are going to stick out from there. So I'm going to pull that out, and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue kind of right on the edge. And then I can slide it in and position it exactly where I want it. And then do the same thing on this side. And then need the horns. Let me grab some white. Okay, so I got a really big piece of white. I'm not going to need that much, so I'll cut a little bit of it off. Okay. So this is the. Uh, let me just double check. All right. So this is the part where I want to have the horns come out, but these are slightly different sizes. So what I like to do is I like to flip it over. All right, and then you know say, oh, okay, that's about where I want it. And then I can take this, I'm going to slide it underneath. And so this is going to be the back of the horn. And then I can sketch it. I just kind of have a feeling, I just want this, this horn to be kind of a little bit on the small side. Okay. So I have to actually extend it. So I, I drew this little line in here to indicate kind of like where the edge of the horn was. And then I can cut this. Let's 
so that way the pencil marks are always going to be on the back. That's the thing I kind of have to think about, is always trying to keep the pencil marks on the back. Now, I don't want to put the glue on the pencil side. I'm actually going to put the glue on the other side. And then turn it over. Something like that. And so that way, when I flip it back over, the horn's underneath. All right, so again, he's going to be eh, maybe about there. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I've got a little bit of paper there. Again, I'm going to have it going to have it a little bit longer than I need it. I don't know if you can see that those marks, the lights look a little bit bright. That's all right. Let me make that a little bit longer. And then I'm going to cut that out. Again, that's going to get glued on like that. A little bit of glue. So if you are tuning in, um, you know, you might want to, if you want to pop into the comments and, and say hi. I always appreciate seeing where everybody's from. Okay, so it's going to go like that. And again, I'm, I have have quite a few, uh, you know, where I can cut it off. But I'm not going to quite cut it off yet. Actually, I might because I want to go ahead and think I'm going to glue this down. I think that's what I'll do um, because I have everything that I think I need um, yeah because I'm just trying to think I'm gonna do the mouth I've got eyes yeah so I don't I don't need anything else I'm gonna but again I'm gonna cut this a little bit longer than I need to just to give myself a little bit of spare room as I place things down And then I'll just clip away the pencil. Okay. Now this has this paper has a lot of glue on it, so I'll go ahead and flip that over. All right. I have to be careful as I'm putting glue on the back. I don't want to bend anything. And I don't want to get like glue underneath to get a lot of glue on the front of it. So I'm just going to take my time and really spread the glue. This glue is usually a really dark blue, but it's it's starting to fade. It's still sticky. Doesn't mean it's it's any less sticky. It's just that whatever that activator is. You know, whatever that blue stuff is that dries clear, it just slowly dissipates. So even sometimes you, you'll open up one that you've never used, and it'll be the blue, and you're like, oh, it's a white. But as long as it's sticky, it still works. It's just that that blue indicator that whatever has just maybe run its course or whatever, or you know, maybe it's just dried out a little too much. Okay. So I think if I can get them lined up at the bottom. I actually got a little bit too close or too far away and that his arm was not quite long enough, but that's all right, everything else is. I think I got it lined up.
Okay. So I think before I do the eyes, I want to do a mouth that kind of goes across this way. Um, let me see if I need another piece of that dark green. Hopefully I've got another piece. Yeah, here we go. Oh, it's not big enough. <laughs> There's one that's long enough, but maybe not as wide as I need it. And another one that's not quite long enough. Okay, good. I was gonna say, don't tell me I don't have another piece, but I've got another big one. Okay. So this is definitely too big, but let's kind of think about how big I want the mouth. So we're gonna just cut off a big chunk And then think about how, about how wide do I want it? Okay. okay. So I'm thinking, you know, I want the mouth to be, you know, kind of here, but I, I want to kind of think of it backwards because I'm going to sketch it on and then when I glue it, down then I will flip it over so I'm thinking if I want this side to be bigger than higher than this side I'm actually going to draw it in reverse so that's that's something to kind of like okay I need to wrap my brain around drawing this in reverse All right, so we'll cut that out. Okay, so then when that gets flipped over, it's going to be like that. Now, the only problem is it's really hard to see this top. Like, I can see the bump over here. But, uh, you know, because it's the same color, it really blends together. Now, yesterday what I did was I did some colored pencil there. But what I'm going to do today is a little bit different. I'm going to do a lip. Um, and so I have this lighter green. So I'm going to do a light green lip. So what that means is I've got to um, flip this around. Okay. And... Uh, so I'm going to trace the top of the mouth, okay? So I know, like, okay, there's his mouth, and then I want to think about a lip. So the lip is actually going to be maybe a little bit bigger, so that way it's not quite lined up with the top of it, if that makes sense. Okay. And uh, so we'll cut this out and we'll see. We'll see if it's gonna work. It's the nice thing about the collage is that I can try it and then, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can always cut a different piece or trim it or make adjustments on it. Right. So that would go something like that. <laughs> yeah, I like how that, that looks. So. All right. And 
to see. Just trying to think what I want to do. I'm going to end up giving him some teeth. But I think I want to go ahead and put uh, some glue on this and glue this lip on. And I put a lot of glue on this already, so let's go ahead and flip that. Okay, so when I put the glue on, I can kind of try to stay close to that pencil mark I put in earlier. But if I need to, I can adjust it as well. There's something about this side I just don't like. It's a little bit better. I have this little little piece that's sticking. So I'm not going to glue that down yet because I've got some teeth that I want to put on them. And for teeth, I think I'm going to do some pointy teeth. So I tend to make the teeth like this, make them much longer than I think I'm going to need. because I end up gluing it behind. I'm thinking maybe a couple more. I don't think any of the white I have is going to be big enough. Let's take this. So I can I can position these where I want them. So once I get them where I want, there's I'm gonna try I'm gonna do something um, where I can mark kind of where the lip is so I know where to glue. However, um, I don't want to get pencil on my uh, lip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that doesn't move. Kind of moved a little. All right, so once I get it, so if I pull this up a little bit and then just rough in where I want the line. So again, I'm kind of pulling the tooth up just a little bit. I'm gonna draw on that line so just a little bit. I don't know if you can really see that line, but it's just what, what that's gonna allow me to do is to put glue on it because you know, these teeth are all different sizes. So I end up with a line where I'm like, oh, okay, now I see. And make sure I don't have any sticky glue. And so when I slide this back in, I can just make sure that I cover up the pencil line. It's just a way to be a little bit more accurate with my 
with my gluing. So I think that's ready to glue down. So I'm just really trying to slather the back with glue and taking my time, being careful not to bend. Sometimes if I go real crazy with it, I can bend the paper. So kind of making sure I'm going off and then lifting up the glue stick. Really making sure I get a lot of glue. It might be hard to see those teeth on that white paper. I just get a lot of glue on the back. And then I can position this. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Um, now I want to think about eyes. Uh, I think yesterday I did one big eye. I think I'm going to do two smaller eyes for this guy. And so I'm just trying to think what I can use. There is actually, this looks a little bit like a gray or a black. It's a dark green actually. So I'm just kind of wondering if that would work. I don't know. I just don't know if it's too dark. But the thing is, like, you know, if it's a big eye, it's going to be over here. The other thing I was thinking of, I have a blue. I have a dark blue. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking the dark blue. I'm thinking the dark green might be, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like sometimes it's like, I don't know. Never know until you try, right? Uh, I, I kind of feel like I want to keep it in the in the green family, even though blue is related to green. But Yeah, I think that'll work out because once I get the other, the other one, the other colors on it, it should it should be fine. Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, so I'm th thinking, I think I wanna have little pink circles, <clears throat> very similar to what I did with the big face I, the other day. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and just see if I can cut something that'll fit.
looks kind of weird, but that's all right. I don't have the white on it yet. Eh, maybe just a little bit smaller. There we go. Definitely a little bit smaller with that one. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the pink part down, but I'm not going to glue the the um, the dark green part down yet because I just I want to make sure that the dark green is really going to work and what I'm thinking is that maybe once I get the white in and then get the iris and the pupil maybe I'll be like oh it doesn't work so if I kind of wait then once I see it all together then I can be like oh okay it does work or it doesn't work if it doesn't work, then yeah, I've devoted some time to making the eyes, but then I can always do them again with a different color. So kind of thinking like, oh, maybe I should have gone with that blue, but I kind of I think it's going to turn out. <laughs> he looks very very uh, possessed right now, <clears throat> but that's not what I want. I think this piece might be big enough. Has this weird little point and take that off. Definitely too big. Yeah, I think that works. Now that I see it with the whites, I think it's going to work. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and glue this down.
And use a little bit of this turquoise for his eyes. So one thing is, you know, I have all this colored paper. Like I said, it's a high quality colored art paper. So it's not your standard construction paper. Um, but there, there is a brand of construction paper that I really like called True Ray. And uh, it's very bright, uh, just almost, almost as bright as this stuff, actually. And you can get it in lots of different colors. Um, but the only problem is that it's not acid free and it's not uh, light, light fast, so it can fade. I mean, this this paper will fade too, but uh, all any paper can really fade in light. So if I were, if somebody were to, you know, if I were to hang this up, I'd say, hey, you know, just don't put it in direct sunlight. That's a little too big. But what I was going to say is you could do painted papers. So that's always interesting to do is to paint your own papers. And I always think of Eric Carle, you know, the, the Hungry Caterpillar and all those books that he has illustrated by doing painted paper collages. So that's a good way if you're like, oh, well, I don't have colored paper or I don't have a whole lot of variety of papers. And then I know some people might have scrapbook paper, depending on how thick, thick it is. And I know a lot, uh, most scrapbook paper is probably acid free, which makes it good. So it's a lot of work to kind of do the eyes like this, but I just kind of feel like, you know, the eyes are the focal point. It's what we pay attention to the most. So if I take some time now and spend a lot of time, make them, make them really that focal point, then I think it's a good thing. And I just think, I just, I really love, like, the detail. You know, so, I mean, there's dark blue, pink, white, blue. So that's four pieces. This is going to be a fifth piece. And then the little white reflection will be a sixth piece. So the, the paper gets pretty, pretty stacked up in the eyes. but they are an important part of my monster. He's looking pretty good. Okay. A little bit of glue. And then something that small, I just take it and rub it on the glue stick. I end up with glue on my finger, but that's not that big of a deal. Okay. 
Now comes probably the hardest part is cutting that little white reflection. This one's going to be the hard one. So I cut a small piece to begin with. quite as small as I wanted. real small. There we go. So yes, yeah, so I think that works. All right, so looking pretty good. I think now what I want, I'm going to pull out some of this yellow. Now it's time for some spots. I like doing spots whenever I do the collage monsters just because they're a little bit easier. Um, if I were to do stripes, I would probably want to do the stripes before I glued glued it down. So like if I were going to do stripes on his arm, I'd want to do that before I glued everything down. That way I could have the stripes a little bit longer and then trim them as, as necessary. If that made some sense. But spots are, are pretty easy to do. You know, cutting out little circles and little ovals. I think I want a few spots up there too, just to kind of help balance them out. But these are going to be a lot smaller.
Okay, go ahead and glue that down. Because of the way I made them, you know, doing the lip, uh, using the collars that I used, I don't think I'm going to do any other details with other materials. So the other day when I did the face, I used a bit of a uh, pink ink to kind of add some line, add a line and some dots on a tongue. And then yesterday I used a little bit of colored pencil on the monster just to kind of give some shading. But I think this guy, I don't think he really needs that because the, the lip really helps separate the mouth from the rest of the body. All right, so I think he's almost done other than trimming him up and signing him. All right, so I'll flip him over and then I can really see kind of where I need to trim. So thinking this guy is done. Got my pen and I'm gonna sign it. All right, well. I hope you enjoyed another monster. Um, I really had some fun making them. Uh, I, I really, I, I really love the cut paper. Um, I don't know. It's just there's something about paper that I really, really like, and all those rich, bright colors that that I really like. And I can just make some really awesome monsters out of it. But this is the first time I've really tried like this the monster selfie out of. Uh, out of collage I haven't really done that before so yesterday and today were like my first uh, attempts at that so it's kind of kind of neat to try something I haven't done before um, but yeah so if you've been making them making monsters along with me I would love 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 to see what you're doing so um, you know you can always take a photo and post them in the comments or like I said before you can tag me on uh, if you post to social media so um, yeah, so um, see, tomorrow's Thursday, so that means I'm going to record, hopefully record and remember to actually unmute myself. Um, but yeah, so if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I always try to go back and, and answer them. And uh, But yeah, so thank you so much for tuning in again. And uh, yeah, I look forward to coming back tomorrow. Like I said, I'm not going to be live, but I will will uh, try to record myself. So um Anyway, thank you so much, and as always, happy creating. <laughs>